today we're going to be looking at doing our pop-up architecture. When we looked at architecture earlier, we saw there were lots of different kinds of buildings. Some of them were very rigid and had geometric shapes, so shapes that were defined, uh, rectangles, triangles, circles, squares. Uh, they tend to have straight edges and pointy corners for our geometric shapes. Some of them were more organic and free-flowing uh, with curves and circles um, in natural forms. You get to decide what buildings you wanna to do today. Remember, we're going to be layering these buildings uh, on our cityscape, so we want to use as much of the space as possible. Because our cityscapes are going to be horizontal folds, Right, they're going to be like this. We need to make sure we're using our paper this direction. So the tallest your building should be is eight and a half inches tall. We have to be careful about that today. Um, width wise, we wanna have at least four buildings in your cityscape. So be thinking that some need to be taller, some need to be shorter so we can see past the shorter ones to the taller ones further away when we layer them in there. I'm just gonna go through and design a couple of buildings here. Okay, I came up with a lot of different ideas. I have three buildings, I have some bushes and a tree. If I wanna add an extra building, I'm going to get another sheet of paper. Remember, make sure you're using the tag board or the index paper on these. As you can see, I have my organic building over here, some more of my geometric buildings and then my organic natural shapes. As, as I go back through now, I want to outline these with Sharpie. You can use black Sharpie or you can use colored Sharpie if you're thinking about painting with lots of different colors. Okay, so you can see that I sort of changed this plan over here and I have a few areas where there's still some pencil showing. So I'm gonna take my big eraser and I'm going to erase. Now erasing seems like a normal thing. We've all done it for a long time. But what really works best when you're erasing is if you erase with tiny little strokes. I'm not going like this over my whole paper. That's not as effective or as strong as being able to do just tiny little areas that are only about that long. That's about all the more I'm erasing at a time. And it gives me more control over my eraser and really lets me follow those lines and put a lot more pressure on there. So when you're erasing, just like when we're coloring things in with erasing, we're gonna do small little strokes in small areas each time we erase. So for this one today, I'm going to use watercolor. When we use watercolor, we're gonna want a finer tipped brush, one with a point, because these are small spaces to fill in. Um, be careful that you're rinsing between colors and you're letting a section dry before you paint right next to it so they don't accidentally blend and bleed into one another. Now this is one instance where I'm not really going to wait for it to dry between because I'm doing a tree and I want it to look like it has some layers. So I'm gonna rinse my brush and while it's still damp, I'm gonna go back in with just yellow and add some yellow in there to layer it a little bit. And you'll notice that gives my tree a little bit more of a full look. I can go back in as well with blue and add some of the shadows in where it might be a little darker on the tree. Usually in the center of the tree, it's a little darker. And then in some of the outer areas, there might be some thicker leaves out there. And I'm just going kind of blotchy, not everywhere, just in a few places, and I let it blend and bleed together just like that. So now that I'm finished with this part, it's still damp. I'm gonna make sure my name's on it and put it on the drying rack. 